And ladies and gentlemen, the reason for me appearing here in front of me is really to warm you up a little bit on golden rice and and what golden rice is all about, what it has been, and uh, uh, to sort of set the stage for those speaking after me, uh, telling more about what the next steps are that uh, we uh, shall take. So golden rice is yellow, as you can see. The name is, de is de derived from the golden color of those grains, and uh, they're yellow because they accumulate beta carotene, a very common compound that is in all green vegetables, in carrots, and so on and so forth. So anonymously, this uh, beta carotene is also termed pro-vitamin A because upon ingestion, it would, after absorption in the intestine, be cleaved centrally to deliver, to deliver the real uh, effective uh, vitamin A in the form of retinol. Um, you know, it is on a mission, as the title says, and it was on the, since the beginning, because uh, Ingo, uh, Patrikas, and myself, uh, from the beginning, never look at this undertaking as a purely academic exercise. Uh, rather, we wanted to, uh, through farming, through farming systems, provide this micronutrient to rice-consuming societies where vitamin A deficiency can be a very large problem. So, uh, yes, it is on a mission and has always been on a mission. It is, though, genetically modified. It is genetically modified simply because of a necessity. There is uh, the, 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 the golden trait of grains cannot at all achieve by breeding because Simply, among all of these hundreds of cultivars of rice known, uh, there is not one uh, uh, that has been identified that could produce this uh, compound in the grain. So therefore, uh, genetic engineering had to be employed, and uh, in a nutshell, the discoveries that were made that, yes, one can uh, initiate this biosynthetic pathway, that is a multi-step pathway, into the rice grain <coughs> by utilizing two genes, uh, uh, two biosynthetic genes that, uh, that are necessary. One is a plant enzyme called phytin synthase, and the second uh, is a, is a, is a is codes for, for phytin desaturase, also termed credi, which out of practical reasons and reasons of feasibility is from, uh, from a bacterium. Uh, there was a landmark part paper that describes this discovery in the year 2000 published in Science that shows that, that the feasibility of, uh, of such an undertaking and that describes the prototypes because really they were prototypes, no products. And all you can do with prototypes is, for instance, make little postcards like this technician did and you can be sure that I significantly increased the workload of this technician after I've seen that. <laughs> now, um, prototypes are prototypes, and prototypes are made to be improved. That's in the word, actually. And this is what happened with Golden Rice as well, like with any other technology. Uh, this is related to many, many technical details, among which there's a major issue that was the amount of beta carotene to be accumulated in those rice grains. So the prototypes are actually very low, like 1.6 micrograms per gram uh, of content. And <coughs> further development led us over Golden Rice 1 with, a, with, with about 6 micrograms per gram until finally Golden Rice 2 was developed, 31 micrograms per gram. And as you can see by the color there, uh, so in the middle, this is the prototype. And on the right-hand side, this is a Golden Rice 2. Uh, that this, uh, this is reflected by color, which became uh, or almost orange, and there's a, another landmark paper uh, of Payne et al. 2005 published in Nature Biotechnology to indicate you that it took us sort of three, four, almost five years to do these improvements. So after that time, after those additional four to five years, all the efforts were directed to, uh, to turn all of these discoveries into something useful um, which means uh, essentially to breed uh, golden rice into target varieties with agronomic importance and uh, just to indicate you that from 2005 approximately onwards the golden rice project was mainly a breeding project that was uh, done to 
take both of these technologies, Golden Rice 1 and Golden Rice 2, uh, including several events, integration events, DNA integration events of that te technology, to breed them all into target varieties. Those were selected strategically. There were some, some of these varieties are mega varieties in, of, of broad a Asian coverage, such as IR64 and IR36, <coughs> were also varieties that were more locally important, uh, like uh, just these are just examples, Swarna uh, at the bottom that is important to India, there is a rice variety that is important to Indonesia, to Vietnam, Philippines, Bangladesh and so on and so forth and that was the point where this, uh, this project really grew larger and larger and larger and uh, this formed what we term the Golden Rice Network uh, which was led uh, by the International Rice Research Institute already, uh, but together with uh, national research uh, um, institutions in the Philippines, such as Phil Rice, this, which is the Philippine Rice Research Institute, the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute, Kulong Delta Rice Research Institute in Vietnam, and so on and so forth, several institutions in India uh, altogether uh, were involved in that effort which had besides this integration, this necessary integration of the trade into important, agronomically important varieties, also had uh, the objective to select the event. Uh, an event is an integration event uh, of DNA into a plant. They may all be equivalent, but at the end of the day, uh, because of cost reasons mainly, there should be the focus on one event only, and, and that selection uh, was enabled by basically answering those two questions which I have put up here, which is uh, which events produce consistent level of pro-vitamin A across all of these cultivars that the trade has been crossed into and, and, and which are uh, the events that, uh, that consistently show good agronomic performance. So behind these little two sentences, there's massive data sets on which, however, at the end allowed us then to to make this event selection. There was a big question, again, um, that we considered a big question because we have been wrestling with this quite a while, and that is, how well is the beta carotene from the rice grain absorbed in the, uh, by humans? And, and, uh, and we didn't know how to solve this until finally uh, Rob Russell uh, came in. Um, who is a professor at Tufts University and actually here with us today. Um, and he, uh, by using sophisticated methodologies, uh, conducted human feeding trials at Tufts University with rice that were grown, as you can see here, in rose chambers uh, under heavy water to allow a very sophisticated mass spectrometry-based analysis of the situation. And what came out was a big, big, one of the very big positive surprises for us because that bioavailability uh, turned out to be absolutely good, much better than, than, uh, than the predictions were, like 3.8 to 1, uh, which means that, that it takes about four molecules of beta carotene uh, to produce one uh, molecule of retinol, which, compared to other uh, foods, uh, is, is an extremely good value. So that today we are very confident that we can, uh, in fact, deliver pro-vitamin A uh, insufficient amounts from a typical diet. Uh, that's another landmark paper uh, of the laboratory of, uh, of uh, Rob Russell uh, and co-workers uh, that describes this, uh, published in the, American, uh, in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Event selection was completed, and here he is. Uh, um, <coughs> Ingo Patrakas, uh, of whom you have heard, could not be here with us today, but event decision was then conveyed to all of our members of the Golden Rice Network and all the other, other materials were destroyed. Um, so from a technical perspective, purely <laughs> technical perspective, really, we are actually ready to go. Uh, to fulfill that mission, again, that mission is in our mission statement of the humanitarian board that uh, governs the Golden Rice development which is to effect the free transfer of golden rice technology into local crop varieties within appropriate biosafety and regulatory structures for provision to defined resource poor farmers who <coughs> locally sell or consume the resulting crop. That is the mission. 
and uh, the speakers coming after me will describe a little bit how that is going to be achieved.